What's the haps? I'm John, aka Maroka, and welcome to Spiral Spiel! We're in the Silver Pawn Gates this week, which is uh, mostly gremlins-y, construct -y, that kind of things. Which I feel is something we've done a lot of, but when it came to actually looking through the gates, they're all kind of the same. There's not a lot of variety today. Uh, all four gates kind of... at uh, this, uh, this particular stratum, at any rate, stratum 5. Uh, yeah, all the gates are just kind of very much of a muchness. It's it's a lot of a lot of these kind of greeny levels that are constructy gremlins and lots more gremlins and I don't know three rings your random number generator is not very random this week it's thrown up a lot of the same so I guess that that's what happens you know it's you know order can come out of randomness you it's monkeys on typewriters and whatnot you know run the same thing enough times you could get something so. How many times, how many times these gates change every couple days, so I guess over time, occasionally you'll get things where everything kind of, the planets align and everything's gremlins for some reason. So that appears to have happened today, so I apologize, I had very little choice in what to, I would, what I would, had to show you. I, I, actually, no, I tell a lie, there was one that had a lot of fiend stuff in it and nuts to doing fiends, so meh. I probably should have done that just for the shiver, just for some variety, but I don't feel like shooting fiends today. What can I tell you? So that's where we're at. That is the gate we find ourselves in. So let us do some Spiral Nights news. Yeah! It, it, it's promos. It's a promo week. It's There's a new one. It's I guess they hadn't gone through all the statuses yet. Uh, last week, last time they did a promo, I was like, oh yeah, they'll probably just go through colors now. I guess, I guess they're kind of mixing up the statuses and colors, because now fire is a thing. If you wanted to look like you're on fire all the time, you can now look like you're on fire. There are, there are now blazing prize boxes, inspired by the being on fire status condition, as it is. So, yeah, that's the thing. There was, there was a little bit of a hiccup in so far as one of the prizes, one of the rare prizes, is the magmatic wings. And uh, that caused a few issues, because... Uh, we, well, you could kind of look at them and say, "Hey, we've seen those before. These are these are not new things. They are these are these are being touted as the new shinies and rarities. It's got a new name and everything, but they were just the wings of summer. They are exactly the same as the wings of summer." And I don't know. There was a couple of messages from Aphrodite on the forums. Uh, one of them was like, uh, there were a couple of different messages. One of them was like, "Oh yeah, this was an accident. It's the wrong item got in the box." And then the second one was like, uh, hey, here's, here's some new wings, have some new wings, I don't know. It kind of seemed like one of them was just usual sort of PR cover-up stuff, and the other was, uh, yeah, we should probably actually do that. So that's, that's a new one, that's a new one. So now we've actually got, now we actually have the magmatic wings, which are actually distinct from the wings of summer, which they were not originally. They look very, very similar, though. It's basically wings of summer with a slight bit of texturing on it which it didn't have before. So it looks very similar, but it's slightly patterned. So, if you wanted patterned wings of summer, congratulations, this, this, these are the wings for you. You may now have those in your life. Let's go kill some gun puppies that are being annoying. They're shooting me! So that's, that's really the news. Uh, nothing new to report on Rise of Nights, really. Still not on Android, could be some time. Uh, so I, I, looking at the forums, there's people like, oh, is it on Android yet? It's like, I don't think it's going to be on Android too quickly. For starters, they haven't finished the iOS one. You know, standard procedure with game development is make it on iOS and then port it to Android. I mean, look at Fallout Shelter. They made it on iOS, and now it's like a couple months later. Now they get around to doing it for Android. And that one kind of backfired in as far as... There was a lot of hype for it at first because everyone was like, Woo! They made a mobile Fallout game! Hey, that's incredible! We love Fallout! Let's play the mobile Fallout game! Then everyone played it and actually was like, Oh, this is actually really kind of boring. There's actually not a lot going on here. So... Let's not play that. And now I don't think there's any Android hype because everybody's like... All the iOS players have played it and gone, Yep, that, that's, that's pretty boring. So... Don't need to bother with that. And all the Android Android users are like, Oh, okay, well, uh, I retract my hype. So, yeah. So, I, 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 it's really ideal to kind of... If you're, doing, if you're doing a big one that's going to capitalize on some hype, you should probably do them at the same time. I have no idea how much hype that this might be potentially capitalizing on. It's not a lot, I suspect. So, I don't think it would hurt Three Rings too much to 
do a staggered launch. Develop war and make the money out of that, and use the money made out of it to continue working on the port, I suppose. That would be how that would work, I imagine. Uh, so with that in mind, let us move on to some questions. Actually, I'm going to bribe you all this week. I'm running a little low on the questions, and I don't think you sent them. I didn't check. I didn't check very thoroughly before I did this. I don't. I don't remember receiving any questions from last week, and I'm going to be in trouble if I'm wrong about that one. So, whoops! I will. After I finish recording this, I'll go back and check to make sure I'm. Find out, find out whether I'm right or wrong about that one, and if you asked me a question last week, I apologize and I'll do it next week, but I haven't written it down, sorry. I just seem to, I don't know, I've got it into my head that there weren't any questions. So, um, we've, still, we've, still, we've still got some old ones which I'm working through, which is fine, but, you yeah, know, we're running low. So I'm going to bribe you with a Steam key for Galaside. Same deal as before, just the one key this time. Last time was a celebratory thing. So, there were celebratory extra keys. Uh, this is not celebratory, this is just... Here's an excuse for you to think of a good question because there's stuff in it for you. So, the uh, developers of Galaside sent me a review key, but they were also using PR company Blackshell Media. And they sent me a Steam key, like, entirely independently as well, so I kind of wound up with two of those this week. So, uh, Galaside was a good game. If you didn't catch my review, it's a it is a side-scrolling shooter mixed with a kind of a match three, match four kind of puzzle game. Uh, technically, the game is match four. I know I referred to it a bajillion times as being match three. I don't think I don't think I'm not sure the semantics matter. It's matching things. It's like bejeweled. You know what that is, right? It's bejeweled meets side-scrolling shoot 'em up. It's pretty interesting, and I'm happy to recommend it. And I have a spare Steam key lying around, so. If you want to get your hands on that, head on down below into the comments, like you always do, and think up something interesting. That would be the best way to do that, and then you can post an interesting question or topic or thing, and and if you if you are the best, if you are my favorite, if you come up with the, what I think is the best question of the week, I will give you a copy of Galaside. How's that for a deal? That sound like a deal? That's a deal, I think, so you can get on that one. So, some questions I do have. Actually, uh, one I got in the mail, one that came through in-game mail this week, was uh, from Deltu. You said, if you had the money to invest into Spiral Knights, would you do that? Mm, no, probably not. I don't think... from Just just from a actual financial perspective, that's not a good deal. If, you, if we're talking, like, had more money than sense, more money than God, if we're talking, like... I want to say Notch, but I think there's probably even better examples than Notch. If we're like... Mm, don't, why am I breaking these? I don't know why I'm breaking those. I feel like this, I, I was breaking those as there's something under it. If we're talking like silly kind of... Bill Gates, Richard Branson, Donald Trump kind of figures... Maybe I could see myself investing in it as kind of a passion thing that I would like... Oh, I really want to see this developed into something way bigger and better. And just just from a pure selfish perspective, I've got the money that I wish to invest in this. Just so it can be a better product and a better thing and it can be awesome. Uh, from an actual investment, investment in, you know, trying to make money out of anything by investing your money. Uh, but the original definition of the word investment, no, not a good deal. Not a good deal. Four-year-old MMO that's got a play concurrent player base of about 500 players. That's not a good place to be throwing your money, I'm going to be honest. If you had... It, well, so it's an MMO, so... To do, to do it, let's, let's look at what we need. You would need a... For starters, I would say a bigger team. A bigger team would be needed to actually make the amount of content that would be needed to support an MMO. MMOs, live or die, I've said many times, based on the amount of content they have. And the big... One of the big... Big factors holding back this particular MMO is the lack of development. Uh, which is hindered by the lack of team working on it. They're a small team, they don't have the resources to work on it. So you would need to hire more people over a period of time, because as I say, it needs to be kind of a sustained development. It's not it's not just throw some money at it and done. You're kind of looking at paying salaries for all those people. All those people are going to want paying on a monthly basis. And yeah, they, they, you're going to want them to keep making that content, because that's how the MMO is going to be sustained. So, if you're not paying those guys, you're not going to get the content. So, that, that's, it's kind of an ongoing investment there. Secondly, 
well, as I say, you've only got 500 players. Um, throwing more content at it ain't gonna fix it. You need a marketing budget. You would need to throw a lot of money into marketing. Uh, likewise with an MMO, kind of some ongoing marketing to keep people in coming into it all the time would also be good. Uh, these are things that are not happening, so... There's a lot of... It's not just, it's not just a, hey, here's a big pile of money, throw it at the game, it's fixed. It would be a sustained and ongoing thing that you would have to be... You'd have to be of the mind that it was worth throwing that money at to make your money back. And while we're on it, Sega, the publisher of the game, they have money. Sega have money. If they wanted to invest in a game, Sega would invest in a game. Sega, I'm pretty sure, have some people who know their business and their investments. They will have some people who deal in finances and are good at working out what is a solid investment and what is not such a solid investment for their business finances. And Sega, people with infinitely more money and business wisdom than I, because God knows I'm not an investor, I've got a rough handle on what probably works and what doesn't, but I am by no means an actual investor, which someone at Sega, you know, actually would be, they have decided that they don't think that's a good use of the money. If Sega don't think that develop, uh, putting resources into developing this game is a good use of money, it's probably not. That really probably isn't a pretty good use of money. Hate to say it. I know there's a lot, of, a lot of instances where Kickstarter, especially recently, is like, oh, publishers didn't want to take this game, but everybody proved them wrong. Look how much demand there is for it. Fine, three rings, get on Kickstarter, just raise, hey, uh, like, three million dollars and prove to the world that people want Spiral Knights developments. That, that's all that takes, right? And even then, when you look at those games, the, the, the amount raised on Kickstarter is still a tiny fraction of what's actually been used for them. If we're going to compare it to Shenmue, if we're going to compare it to Ukulele, or... I can never remember the name of the Castlevania one. I can't remember. Blood something... Blood something. Uh, where we're talking about Shenmue 3, Ukulele, or Blood something. They all raised a tiny fraction of what's actually needed to develop those games. And it's one of those ones where it's like, yeah, you throw you throw millions cumulatively at basically pre-ordering this game. But it still actually relies on someone who's got silly amounts of money to actually pick it up and actually make it happen. And uh, probably still going to have a lot of creative control and direction over what happens with it. And they're going to be paying the marketing budget as well, because they're presumably going to want to sell more than a few copies because they're investing and they want to make their money back on investments, so... It's that kind of deal. And I don't think Spiral Knights fits that bill, like, at all. So, no, I would not invest that money. Uh, also, I, I don't know why I'm leaning toward, I just want to go, uh, there's a couple of Spiral Knights questions I kind of want to touch on. I'm kind of talking longer than I expected about them, but whatever. Uh, Ron Apple says, uh, I never bothered to ask a question, but there's some incentive at this point, which was last time I asked the question, asked you to ask questions in exchange for rewards, and you asked a Spiral Knights question, which I told you not to do. Yeah, that, that applies to this contest as well. If you ask me Spiral Knights question, you're uh, pretty much automatically out of the running for winning a prize. Ask me things that are not Spiral Knights. Uh, what, what about a, a what, what do you think about a novel based upon the minimal lore that has been developed in Spiral Knights, the opening cutscenes and whatnot, the mission systems and things, uh, written by Three Rings itself, actually covering the oranges, origins of the Spiral Knights themselves, along with the Clockworks? Uh, in a weird kind of way, that I suppose that kind of ties into Rise of the Knights, insofar as that covers a little bit, as Rise of the Knights will cover in some weird kind of tangential and not quite entirely fitting with the established canon, but in some way it does kind of tie in, maybe? I don't know. I mean, I discussed this at great length last week. There was an entire video on that, which if you haven't caught already, I talked about that for like quarter of an hour, about canon and everything else as it entails that game, but... Uh, but I don't, I don't know Yeah, I'm not sure how... Well, that game works. Uh, it, it covers some stuff, and it's, you know, it's obviously official, but it doesn't quite tie up. At least not from what we know. It may well do. It may, it may, may be a really intricate and complex story with many plot twists that very cleverly and concisely ties into what we know from Spiral Knights. Or it might not. I don't know. I'll have to play and find out, I suppose. That's the thing. And, well, I say that, but... One thing I totally didn't cover about that game that actually, in retrospect, is like, that's actually a pretty glaring one. Uh, what we know about the monetization model is that they pretty much gate you at three star. If you want if you want any knights higher than three star, which I imagine you probably do, 
uh, to get to to complete the later levels. I imagine you need four and five star equipped knights. Uh, you have to pay real currency. There's no kind of will slowly give you it kind of energy system or to make the frequent and obvious not, not necessarily obvious, but the frequent comparison to uh, Final Fantasy Record Keeper. Ouch, that was stupid. Uh, they 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 give you they give you enough of a pre premium currency that you can occasionally get the high level equipment without spending real money. You don't get it quickly or effectively, but you do occasionally get it. Man, I am making a mess of that. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Freedom. Whereas uh, from what we've seen of Rise of Knights, it's literally if you want if you want to get if you want to get the premium currency that allows you to buy four and five star knights, you cannot do that. In Record Keeper, if you want five star equipment, you can get the currency that you need to buy five star equipment, but just really slowly. It's just like they give you one a day and actually you need five to do a prize draw and it's like a 10% chance of getting something on the prize draw. It's about once every month and a half you'll get a piece of equipment, it kind of works out. It's slow, but it gets there, I guess, kind of slowly. Whatever, that's not not that that's not relevant, but hey. That's that is a concern of mine with the game. It's like if I would start playing it, is it just gonna start yeah, is it just a paywall? At three stars, does it just suddenly say, right, if you wanna go any further, pay up, jump. Not I'm not cool with that, by the way. Not cool. Uh let's do some questions. Let's do some questions that are not spiral knights. Uh, let us kill the things that are being healed. I should probably kill the healer, that would be more effective. Okay... Looking through my questions... Kanothis says... Do you think Earth, despite being called the perfect home for life, is really that great? Could there be better other planets out there with better, more conservative, intelligent life, similar to ours that doesn't mess up as much as we do? It's a big universe, anything's possible. Uh, I've kind of talked about this in regards to like aliens and stuff in the past. It's, uh, I think that, you yeah, know, the universe is big enough and crazy enough that chances are there is life out there. Maybe not in this galaxy, maybe in a galaxy far, far away or something of the sort. Is there any likelihood that it's intelligent life? I don't know. Probably not, because that's, that's pretty complex. But the thing is, the conditions for life to exist are, as far as we can make out, reasonably rare. I mean, obviously there's a big, the big hoo-ha earlier in the week that we finally, finally at long last found an exoplanet that looked like it might potentially have the potential to sustain life. And just because it does have the potential doesn't mean it can, so those planets are rare to begin with. Then just because they have the potential, just because they have the right building blocks that can make life, that doesn't mean they will. I mean... We, they're one of the one of the great mysteries of life, I suppose, is that we still don't really have any particular idea of where where life came from in the first instance. Where did the first single cell organism actually come from in the first instance? How did the primordial goop, the basic building blocks of matter, the amino acids and things that make up DNA and make up cells, where did they come from? Because we kind of don't know that. So whatever process turned an amino acid kind of soup into cells which eventually turned into humans on our planet. That process itself would need to be replicated on another planet. Or, I, I, I guess life could take many forms, but speculating on what forms life to, could take is ridiculous because God knows it could be goddamn near anything. So that, that's kind of a silly and futile task. Assuming it's similar, it would have to take a similar process. Then it would have to undergo the process of evolution, not undergo any mass extinctions that wipes out everything on the planet. That would also have to not happen. And yeah, one species would have to stay around and be dominant and survive long enough and evolve in such a way that they developed a big enough brain to have sentience. There's, there's just kind of a lot of hoops to jump through, and the fact is that, you know, when this big old universe of ours, there probably are, is a planet out there somewhere that may well have established sentience. But the more factors you play into it, the more shrinkingly small the numbers become. It's, the, it's kind of Drake's equation, isn't it? If you, if, you, if you take the number of planets that there are and the, uh, the whole variety of other factors, you can just kind of work it through and kind of work out essentially what the odds are of life in the universe. And this is just taking it a step further. It's like, okay, great. So if we assume that the, you know, the numbers are great enough, given that the odds that we can figure out that there is life, well then, did that life evolve to become sentient? There's a heck of a lot of hoops to jump through to get there. And then, even if we assume that they did get sentient, uh, are they are they going to be more enlightened, more civilized than us, or did they wipe themselves out in the thermonuclear war at some point? 
somewhere around the two million years into their existence mark. Could be, could be. Is it two million or is it two billion? It's two million, isn't it? Yes, humans haven't been around for two billion years. I was just for a moment that I was like, is it an M or is it a B? Pretty sure it's an M. Yeah, no, because the universe is only like 14 billion years old, give or take a couple, depending on who you ask and at what point in time you ask. So, yeah, two, for humans to have been around for two billion years would be ridiculous. Nope, it's millions, it's millions. So, yeah, a lot of hoops to jump through. I... There could be, like I say, just there's, by sheer law of averages, there are enough things out there that anything is possible. There is a, a big, big, big universe out there. And we haven't begun to scratch the surface of knowing what's within it. But, that's the thing, we, 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 don't, we don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. So yeah, uh, also from Canothis, do you think technology in the future, within the next 50 years or so, will affect human culture? Will it be negative, positive, or changes as a species? I love that I stopped to read that while standing on some spikes. I wasn't even looking at what I was doing. I was looked back at the screen and I was like, oh, I appear to be stood on a spike. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm, I'm good at this game. I should probably not stare at the other screen. But then how will I read the questions? Um, I, I don't know. The great quandaries of life, I suppose. Uh, technology, I think it will absolutely improve. I mean, look what it's done for us in the last 50 years. You only have to look at that and then realize that we're, we're continuing to make advancements and improvements. Uh, I'm not convinced that, you know, moving towards tablets is my favorite use of computing technology, but, you know, there are other factors of technology in the universe. Uh, look at medical science and the improvements there. Look at, I don't know, pick a field and any advancements that have been made in it within the last 50 years and then do that again. I mean, wasn't that it wasn't that long ago? I was talking about uh, Google's Nost Nostradamus kind of character who was who made a bunch of really, really surprisingly accurate predictions within the last 15 to 20 years about well things like tablets and whatnot. And one of his predictions was that, was that we will basically have like implants. So will will they straight up improve us? Yeah, possibly. Where if they if this guy's on the money, and he has been on the money in the past, we're kind of moving into what well, I guess I, I guess you would call into transhumanist technolo uh, territory, where kind of people that you know will gladly and happily implant and augment themselves, turning into oh, but basically cyborgs to a great extent. We're moving to the age of cyborgs, probably within the next twenty years or so. So give it fifty years, yeah, God knows what's going to happen in the next fifty years. I'm excited to find out, although 50 years I will be, I'll be retired in 50 years, uh, I'll also be impressed if I'm still alive, so, but I'd be intrigued to find out what will happen then, but of course maybe they will have invented longevity treatments and I, the average lifespan within sort of first world countries will be near 100 quite comfortably without, you know, crippling senility ruining you. I mean, it's, it's all very well living to 100, but if you live to 100 and, you know, still don't have any have grasp of your faculties, that's kind of... Uh, that's not great, you know. If you can live to 100 and keep people, you know, sort of reasonably healthy and happy and in a, in a useful state, that'd be great. Of course, there, when you start going in that territory, that's when people start pushing up the sort of... <laughs> the age of retirement. It's like, oh, great! You can live longer? Great! Now you can work till 90. It's like, no! I want to retire sometime in my life, but that's neither here nor there. That's... It'll be interesting to see where things go, but 50 years down the line, God knows. Te technology's moving at such a rate that that's, that will just be really difficult to predict at this stage. Except for Mr. Google Man, whose name I never did look up or find out, just relay on to you guys. Uh, you could try Googling it. You could Google the Google Man. Don't use those search terms. You probably won't find anything. <laughs> Just type Google man into Google. You're not yet. You won't find much. Look up Google technology predictions. Maybe that that would probably be a better search term. <laughs> if you're if you're really keen to know what the person's name was that made the predictions. That would be better. That would be a better one for you. Uh, where the hell was I? Something about technology. Uh, within 50 years... There will be negative, there will be negative developments because that's just kind of seems to be the way human culture goes. 
Not everything's going to be good. Things will be developed for war. I mean, but then, it, then again, some of the greatest applications of technology in the world always started life as military projects anyway. M most of the useful tools we have as sort of everyday things these days, they were originally used predominantly for purposes of killing people, ultimately, in the long shot. Look, how, how many things use various location-based systems that are reliant on GPS these days? GPS is ubiquitous. The amount, yeah, the amount of services you may use on your smartphones and what I'm not even just talking about sat-nav here, we're talking about the amount of things that actually use location data these days. It's crazy. Where do you think GPS comes from? Nobody thought, hey, this would be a good project to give to civilians. No, civilian use was a byproduct. It's a military project. Jesus, GPS. Those satellites are up there so the military know where everything is. So, yeah, the fact, that you, the fact that you can now use it to look up hot singles in your area on Tinder is purely a byproduct of somebody wanting to get a better lock on where their military units were so they could kill the enemy more efficiently once upon a time. How did we send a man to the moon? Well, it was technology that was invented during World War II. And I've said it before, if you ever invent a time machine, please don't go back and kill Hitler because the Second World War as terrible as it was, is the catalyst for a astonishing amount of the technology that we use in the modern age. We computer, uh, computers and the Enigma, sh Enigma machine and all that, kind of, uh, that drove a lot of development in the, direct in the direction of computing. So, we wouldn't have particularly good computers these, day uh, these days if the Second World War happened. We would certainly, uh, I'm, uh, we certainly wouldn't have gone to gotten as far as we have in space, space travel, or never, we never put a man on the moon. There's a lot of little things like that. Now, those are sort of more arguable about, are those immediate benefits to us? What do we get, do we get immediate improvements in life by going to the moon? Probably not, but it is important to the future of mankind in the long run. Landing on the moon was important for mankind in the long run. It is but one step in the process of you know, colonizing Mars and whatnot. If we ever get to the point where we're like, hey, you know what would be nice? If we could colonize Mars. Well, you would never have got the rockets to be able to get to Mars to colonize Mars if we hadn't landed on the moon, and we wouldn't have landed on the moon if we hadn't had the Second World War, which had developed rocket technology. It's all very intricately linked, all in interwoven, so please, please don't assassinate Hitler with your time machine. I think is ultimately the conclusion we're coming to here. Have I cleaned this place out? I think I've cleaned this place out. I think I'm good. Oh no, there's two things here. There are two gremlinses. There will be negative things. Those negative things could easily drive positive things. There will be positive things. And I think we're absolutely, absolutely getting to the stage where we can and will change as a species based on the technology that we invent. Uh, I have heard it sort of postulated before that I mean, I talked about cyborgs earlier. I've heard I've heard it suggested that we are essentially kind of cyborgs already in this day and age. I Me, mean, yeah, and that's not not to say anything of people with like prosthetic limbs and stuff because those obviously already exist and we're making excellent strides in those fields. Uh, I've got. Oh God, damn it! I haven't got a single vial on me. Are you kidding me? There's one up there. Uh, let's drop the poison. I don't have a single vial to throw at this thing. I was like, what can I throw here? That's what I can throw. God damn it. As if I managed to go through this whole thing without picking up any vials. Man. Uh, I've heard it suggested that we are cyborgs now, not just in prosthetics, but in the fact that everybody has literally a computer strapped to us. It may not be, you know, built into our bodies per se, but I... I have, I have access to a vast repository, vast, vast repository of information within arm's reach, and I can put it in my pocket and take it with me outside and get that information any time I like, very nearly any time I like. If I go into, like, the Lake District, it's kind of a bit iffy, but in most metropolitan district areas, I, 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 I can get most information I would want on most topics within a matter of a few minutes. I am, of course, talking about smartphones. So, yeah. So, the fact that we all kind of have this technology kind of on us at this stage, or uh, quite a lot of people have this kind of technology, that's... Even even though it's not, even though we're not sort of... It's built into our brains, we're not bringing it up on our retinas, it, it's, still, it's still moving into cyborg territory. Hello, Basil, what do you have for sale? 